How's it going? I'm Steve in the studio. We're going to mix it up a little bit today and stay inside the box to use Logic Pro's drummer tool. This is a feature I use all the time at the beginning of my production sessions, regardless of whether or not I'm planning on using an external drum machine or replacing with samples later. I like to use the drummer tool to craft ideas, convert those ideas that I want to keep to MIDI, and then we'll take it from there. I'm just at the beginning of this like lo-fi, rainy, study kind of beat uh, with no beat yet. It's just guitar and bass. So I figured this would be a great time to roll tape and walk you through how I use the drummer tool to get a jump on these projects. So I'm going to put the cans on and jump in the box. Let's go. All right, as promised, we are in Logic Pro. So here's the track. We have guitar in green and bass. The gap right here before the bass comes back in is where we just want guitars and then we want the beat to start where the bass comes back in. So I'm just focusing on this section of the piece for now. Again, this is all pretty fresh. Don't know exactly where this is going. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Appreciate you following along and hopefully you can take something from this. So let's get some context to the piece we're working on. I'm going to hit play. So right there, when the bass starts again, is when we want the drums to come in. So first things first, let's pull up our drummer. So we're going to hit the plus sign. Alternative sounds like a great place to start for this kind of vibe. And we'll get our trusty Brooklyn kit. Right away, I'm going to duplicate. So we have that exact same situation. And then I'm going to mute the second one for now. So I'm doing this because once we have something crafted by using the drummer tool that we like, I like to copy that onto the second track, and then that's ultimately where we'll convert it to MIDI. And that way, having MIDI on one track and the drummer tool on its own track will prevent us from accidentally maybe clicking a section that we created with the drummer tool that we like and changing the parameters and then losing that idea. So by default, let's just slide this over here and we'll see uh, what it gave us. So I'm going to shorten our locator to just start right about here so we can hear it come in. A bit lively, a bit too peppy for this, but hey, we're just getting started. All right, so I'm going to click follow down here, and this will bring up everything that we have in the project already, all the tracks. And what we're going to do is probably, we'll try bass and we'll try guitar strums. I feel like guitar strums is going to be better. You can see as I click that, it analyzed it real quick and changed what was happening. So let's give it a listen. Much better than without following something. So now let's change it to bass and all right. We saw the graphic change a little bit there. So let's see. Interesting. Okay, so I like both. I think maybe I like guitar strums, but I'm not going to drive myself crazy in this video because I'm kind of using this as a walkthrough, knowing that people are going to be watching me, so I just make decisions and go, and then I'll come back and and see what happens. Um, so we're going to keep that on bass actually for now. And I want to show you something real quick where if you 
keep the drummer tool and you think you're just going to like use it like this for the sake of your demo um, without breaking it down into MIDI or splitting it out so you can mix the individual drum parts, by default, it creates this reverb here, uh, small, whatever, four. And I personally don't like the sound and it also is just what always pops up with Brooklyn. So the first thing you can do if you want to start kind of crafting the sound is just don't send the drums. I went to the drum sends here and just delete that reverb. So now it's gone. If you do what I'm about to show you and that is convert the drum kit, the drummer, to a producer kit, it'll actually get rid of that reverb for you. Uh, so anyways, we got rid of the reverb if we're just using the drummer tool as it is. Okay, so it's a bit hot, it's a bit crispy. I'm just gonna turn off the multi-presser. Multi, multi, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. All right, now we're just hearing the compressor. So without going into too much detail, I'm just gonna turn the gain down a little bit here. And just a little faster attack, a little slower release, try and get kind of the vibe of the piece here. Cool, and we can see our compressor working at the top. So a quick little touch here on EQ and a free tip on how to make anything sound lo-fi. In this case, our drums, you're going to basically pick the point that's pleasing to your ear and roll off everything above it. So it's generally around 5K in lo-fi world that you will want to, we'll just go to 5K exactly, uh, roll off above. So let's hear it now and let's shorten our locators just so we get right into the drums. So we kind of see what's going on with the kit. And that's how it gets crispier. So really, again, for anything that you want to kind of have that lo-fi sound, that's one way of many that you can get that genre's sound. I'm going to keep it right here for now. We'll just take a little bit off, probably that won't even make a difference to us at the moment. All right, that's just kind of tonal. Well, it's EQ, um, but just for the sake of hearing something a little more pleasing to our ears to help with the piece. All right, so now we're actually gonna convert this into a producer kit. And that way we'll be able to mix in the mix window or in this window here, we'll be able to see the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, everything broken out. So we're gonna open our library. We're gonna scroll down to producer kits and we already have Brooklyn. So we're gonna hit this Brooklyn with the plus sign and here we go. So now we have everything. We have a snare top, snare bottom, kick in, kick out. We're spoiled. We've got it all, including in our mix window. So this basically becomes the drum aux. And I just did all of that and it gave us the multipressor again. And it's taking gain away from a flat EQ. So not gonna overthink this. You saw it already. Um. All right, so that's super lively. So now we can turn that down a little bit. Great. Another concept just to keep in mind as we go here is headroom, as you can see we have space. This is a whole nother topic for another day, but when you're mixing 
or writing or anything first of all the quieter the better you could say um, just for ear fatigue and also the more space you leave yourself the more headroom you leave yourself in each track and in particular in the stereo out the more room you actually have to explore as you mess with EQs as you mess with compressors you're adding gain in some cases uh, in the compression you have the the makeup gain uh, in the EQ this is all adding gain as you increase or taking away as you decrease you can do it as a whole here as well so give yourself that headroom because as you add things you're just gonna start hitting that red and then you're just gonna have to zero everything out and then it's gonna sound weird and then you're kind of back at square one so it's a lot of fun to do stuff really loud and with no headroom but do your best to work at a comfortable volume and with good respect to headroom so that's your PSA let's get back into the drummer tool that is why you clicked this video all right so this piece let's just take it to the end of the guitar for now so we're gonna stretch this out and if we double click here we get this window we're gonna make it a little more simple a little more soft just by default so there's that and let's leave the fills let's turn it up actually and just keep the fill at 50 percent and now we're gonna see what it does what we like what we don't want to like or what we don't like and take it from there while this is playing kind of work on a little mix and this will just constantly change of course and as you can see mixing does have a very visual element to it no matter what anyone says yes you want to use your ears but you also have to use your eyes I'm guessing we'll get our, our fill here towards the end. And that was my fault for dragging that out too far. So let's drag that back in. And you can see it changes right here from the rest of it. So we'll just play that. Do we like that? Do we not like that? Who knows? Let's say that we love that and we want to keep it. So I'm going to snip and then we're going to option click, drag it down to our muted track. And now we'll be able to change that into MIDI later if we want to keep that as a part. So I'm going to double click here again. And this time I'm going to turn fills all the way down. You can see it getting rid of some of the hits in there. And then this will give us our nice kind of straightforward bass. All right, so that's really what I'm after, at least is like the foundation of the beat here. Knowing that, again, depending on what we use down the road, if we use a drum machine, we'll send the signal to it and then maybe we'll play the drum machine live as it tracks adding our own fills and what have you but this is the basic data that i want to send somewhere else all right so now let's say cool i want to keep hearing in the drummer tool this the same way but i want to change what's going on in the second part let's say we want to change it to toms so i cut um I always, at least at this stage, make my right click my scissors tool. That way I can just hit Apple or Command to bring up the scissor and then cut wherever I want to. All right, so now these are independent. So if I switch and click Toms here, you'll see that just change. Maybe not in that one 
section. Let's listen. Cool. Just toms. And to make sure I'm not crazy, let's listen to this part. And that is the hats. All right, so back over here. Let's try and spice it up with what they've got available to us. All right, so maybe we want this to be a little more complex. And let's add some fills since we've got toms going. All right, and you saw it kind of change there at the end. And we'll, now well, we've got a little bit of a swing, so we'll keep that. So I actually like that a lot. We went from the hats to the toms and then back to the hat to complete this verse or whatever it might be. So I'm going to delete this stuff down here now because this works for me. So we'll take it and copy it down here. And now is a good time to show you converting it to MIDI. So I'll just select them all. I'm going to hit, I still have to look at my keyboard to know what to actually call it. It's just all muscle memory. So control click, convert to MIDI region right there. Boom. Now we have our MIDI. And now we can take this and let's say, mute this again. Uh, let's say we wanted to just experiment further in the same verse here. Now we can change this stuff up totally and it's not going to affect the MIDI we had. So, or the MIDI we just created. So yeah, we just kind of like went off here with it. Let's change things around a bit. Get heavy. That's some screams, some pig squeals. All right. And then we'll bring back what we already converted to MIDI and we have that backbone. Of course, tonally, everything that I changed with the producer kit is here again. Let me just hit duplicate, and now there's nothing stopping us from moving our MIDI up there and getting rid of this. And now our MIDI exists with the breakout like this as well. You don't see MIDI I'm sorry, you don't see the MIDI um, on each individual track, but you have it as a whole here. With at least the sound that we kind of figured out that we like. So our panning that we adjusted is still true. Is it not? Nope, looks like the hi-hat's on the right. Look at me, I told you, I'm just kind of doing this all right so clearly I thought I did something that I did not do so I'm going to mute this turn this back on all right and now check this out we're going to go to our mixer this is the best place to visualize it break this out and at least to me when I'm working on a record I like to have the hi-hats the snare as if I'm sitting behind the kit regardless of what's going on with the other instruments. Uh, it's just the sound that I prefer. Nothing wrong with you if you like it the other way. But to put this into the sound that I like, I'm going to take our hi-hats and move it to the other side. And then therefore, we'll just switch our floor tom, our rack tom a little bit. You know, it's, it's literally whatever you want. And then our snare, I'm even going to just take off-center um, to leave that available for some other things. So, all right, that sounds a little better to me. 
Uh, you can see that we also have buses here. And if you slide to the end, you see pump. And pump is another compressor. So kind of some double compression going on. We'll just turn that off for now and shrink this back. OK, so now I can duplicate this. Put my MIDI here and get rid of this one. So now, no matter what I'm playing, I'm hearing things the way they sound a little more natural to me. So the hi-hat's panned and everything else we just did. Cool. All right. So now you can hear that. Let's say this is going to be a verse and the second one we want really heavy. Now we just created that. So using the locator tool, this is kind of not drum tool related, but using our locator tool here, opening our shelf, I can select everything and split by locators. I also use this all the time for creating samples, um, pulling them off of vinyl cuts, what have you. So now that we did that, we can command D, which is not what I wanted to do. So we'll undo that repeat section. I'm so sorry. Repeat section. It's not duplicate. Now you can say, let's create MIDI for both parts here, both verses convert to MIDI and boom. Now you have it. So I don't have to keep doing it. You can see what's going on. We can keep just creating our own sections with the drummer tool changing some parameters, dialing in different grooves that we like, copying them so we don't mess them up, and then continuing on uh, using the drummer as a creative tool. So in summary, the drummer tool, great way to use for your entire project and just tweak the sounds to get your finished final result, or it's a great tool to use the parameters with to analyze the different grooves you've been playing, and then to take what you like that the drummer tool created and convert that to MIDI so that you can work with it as you're used to working with any MIDI, sending it externally, replacing it with samples, what have you. I hope this was beneficial to you. I really, really want to do more videos digging into Logic as well as using all the gear that we have here in our studio. I will do a video sending this MIDI to a drum machine, maybe not this track exactly, um, but stay tuned to see how do we send this MIDI to a drum machine as well as sending MIDI to synths and other gear that we have. Thank you for watching. Appreciate the like and subscribe. Please give me love in the comments. You're also free to give me hate. I just request that it is constructive and that I can take that and turn it into something positive. We're on camera. It's crazy. There's so much going through your head. Everyone that makes these videos, I don't know how y'all do it. I mean, I do, but it's a lot of work. It's very draining, but it is worth it because the stuff is amazing. And I know there's a lot of you out there spending a ton of time on this very YouTube channel and others like it trying to figure things out. Continue on the journey, but also whether it's someone local or myself or someone else, do hire, if you can, some private instruction. It'll save you hours and hours and hours. If you have a human that you can pay for their time to get their insight, and you pair that with what you're exploring on YouTube, that, in my opinion, is the way to attack this stuff. Self-study, third-party opinion. You'll get a lot further, a lot faster, and that's really the main lesson I've learned through my career. There's things to do on your own, and there's even better things you can do with others. So that's it for now. Pull up that drum track. Send me some links. I want to hear some beats. Send me some videos. I want to see your production as it happens as well. 
and I cannot wait to see you next time. Thank you. Peace.